Paul Deeney is Advocacy Officer for CBM Australia. He is co-chair of the ACFID Advocacy and Public Policy Committee and a member of the Australian Disability and Development Consortium. Paul has worked for 15 years in the development sector with World Vision, UNDP, UNAIDS, the Burnett Institute, RMIT University, and various community-based organisations across Australasia, Europe, and Asia. At CBM, Paul specialises in advocacy, lobbying for awareness, not only the public sector, but also government and interagency sectors. CBM last year celebrated its centenary in working with disabilities in developing countries and works in 113 different developing countries. If this is not a full enough life for Paul, he has also worked as a tertiary lecturer on health issues, qualitative research, international development and drug issues. He's a researcher, manager and social worker as well, focusing on health, youth and social justice issues. To say that Paul is passionate about social justice, public health and child protection and poverty issues is an understatement. Would you please welcome Paul Deeney. Thanks, Jim, for that generous introduction. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we meet and pay respect to Elders past and present. To the Honourable Bob McMullen MP, other VIPs, and all here tonight, thank you for coming. There's a note on the lectern that says, please speak into the microphone. And even though I'm an advocate, I often get in trouble at work where it's open plan for being a bit too loud. Um, I think it, I could sort of um, connect with Rory because I used to be lead singer in a band and it was sort of playing no instrument when you had two guitars, synthesizer, drums, tambourine. We were always trying to drown each other out. So I think I sort of always got into the habit of speaking into the microphone a bit too, too loud. Maybe that's how I got into advocacy. It's just fantastic um, to see such a huge turnout tonight and such interest in an issue which few, a few years ago, frankly, was a bit off our radar here in Australia. As you can see and have heard tonight, that situation has most certainly changed and we hope this forum is just part of the ongoing community education and engagement that's needed. Tonight, I want to talk to you briefly about three things. Why Australians should care about disability and global poverty. What's already being done about this issue by Australian agencies and what you can do and why that's so important. After Jim's words, the band rudely interrupted, who were amazing, and our truly inspiring speakers, Bob and Charlotte, my words may well pale by comparison. I hope not though, because disability and poverty is a huge challenge for us right now and one that all Australians should know more about. I'm sure Jim, Rory, or others here today with disabilities could tell you the many difficulties that they have faced having their human rights respected in accessing basic services and supports and in dealing with the widespread discrimination surrounding the area of disability. I started working in the field of mental health about 20 years ago. Little did I know then that I would end up losing my brother to suicide and have another family member with serious and debilitating bipolar disorder. I've also suffered depression myself. Bit ironic, really. And through these experiences in my work, I've seen firsthand how hard it is to get the ongoing support and understanding families need with disabilities. I'm sure many of you here have also experienced this directly or as carers. Imagine then how hard the situation in, is in a poor developing country with few services and little understanding. I've worked in countries where people with schizophrenia are tied to trees or chained to posts. I've been inside prisons where the response to people with disabilities is to jail them indefinitely without any charges. And these fundamental abuses of human rights are still occurring right now. But the main thing I've learned working in this area is that the biggest barrier isn't the disability, but rather our attitudes, our stigma and our lack of awareness. The change they're needed most is in society. We need to change ourselves. We need to become more accepting and more aware about the nature of disability and then make others aware. 
Many of you here would already be aware that disability is both a cause and a consequence of global poverty. We have heard tonight that there are 650 million persons with disabilities worldwide. Almost a half a billion are in our region, making it the third largest country in the world if it was a country. We know that there is something worse than poverty alone, that is disability and poverty. We, we therefore know that the only way to fully achieve the Millennium Development Goals is to make development assistance fully inclusive. How indeed can we make poverty history if we can't reach the poorest of the poor, if we cannot assist the most vulnerable? But knowing and doing are two separate things. The challenge then is to translate awareness, strategies and policies into much needed action on the ground. The exciting news we've heard tonight that this is now happening at a global and at a national level. We've heard from Bob McMullen how our government has made a strong commitment to development for all in our aid program over the coming years. This is to be applauded loudly and we look forward to working with the government and AusAid to jointly build a world where people are not excluded simply because they have disabilities. We've heard from Charlotte McLean Lapo how large multilateral agencies like the World Bank are seeing disability to be a central part of poverty alleviation work. This is again very encouraging and we need more passionate advocates like Charlotte and the World Bank here in Australia, a point I'll come back to later. CBM has also taken up the challenge. We work in 113 countries with over a thousand partners targeting all forms of disability. And we've been doing this work for over 100 years to go into detail on the many ways we work. But rest assured, there are millions of lives that have been transformed and disabilities averted or significantly lessened through the work of our partners and through other agencies who are also working with disability around the world. The reality, however, is that peop the people we reach represent only the tip of the iceberg. And the only way we can tackle this huge problem globally is by getting other agencies and communities, large and small, to play an active role in inclusive development. We cannot do it alone. In the past, we had been finding disability to be somewhat of a blind spot in the development sector, no pun intended. 